This example gives us f of x equals the square root of 3 minus x and restricts our domain to x greater than or equal to negative 2. We want to find the inverse of that function and then graph both the function and its inverse on the same set of axes. So let's bring up the steps to find the inverse function. So first we want to take our function and just replace this f of x business with a y. So here we go, y equals the square root of 3 minus x. Okay, now we swap x and y, swap the variables. So x equals 3 minus y. Now we solve for y, so I'll square both sides. x squared equals 3 minus y. Um, I can add y to both sides and subtract x squared. That gives us y equals 3 minus x squared. Okay, so solving for y is always the trickiest part of this whole process. Finally, we just finish it out by writing this as f inverse of x instead of y equals 3 minus x squared. There's the inverse. Graphing a function and its inverse can be a little tricky, but some very cool symmetry unfolds. So let's take a look here. Let's look at graphing this f of x equals rad 3 minus x. Okay, so there's some shifting and some reflecting going on here. When you're doing shifting of graphs, you always start with the horizontal shift first. Always. Okay, start with the horizontal shift. And you always want to end with the vertical shift. And then in between that, you work from the inside out. Right, so it's really easy to get tangled up in what order to do things. So here, um, and I'm actually going to do this in Desmos eventually, but I, I just want to make sure we could graph this by hand if needed. You start with your base function, right? There we go, square root of x. This is going to move it 3 to the left because we're adding 3. So 1, 2, 3. We have our new function out here. And then this is going to reflect. So that brings our function across the y-axis here. 1, 2, 3. I'll do it in blue. So here's my final function. Whoops something like this. There we go. Okay, so just in case you've forgotten how to do all those shifts and reflections, the blue one is now rad 3 minus x. Now we want to graph that function and its inverse on the same set of axes. So we need to work on this domain a little bit here for the inverse because this first function has a restricted domain. Okay, so let's take a look at what that means. If x is greater than negative 2, greater than or equal to negative 2, well, let's, let's see the maximum that this function could be. Um, so if we put in negative 2 here, we'd have square root of 5. So when we examine this, this square root function, we could say that y is going to be, well, the smallest it can be is 0. Okay. So less than or equal to y, and then the biggest that it can be is square root of 5, right? Because as we start with negative 2 here for x, and we just get bigger and bigger and bigger for x, that's going to make this square root function get smaller and smaller and smaller until it's down to 0. So this is, this is um, the maximum, uh, this is the range right here between 0 and square root of 5. Why do I care so much about the range? Well, the range of the function is the domain of the inverse. So now here I'm going to say x is between 0 and square root of 5. So let's, let's write that as 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to square root of 5. And again if you've forgotten how to graph um, just this standard uh, function by itself this is going to this negative is going to reflect it down about the x-axis and then this 3 will shift it up 3. So without any restrictions or anything it looks like that. Okay so this is all getting pretty messy. I'm going to bring this in Desmos to do the final step because I want to show you very clearly how these functions relate to each other. So I'm going to graph these in Desmos with the restricted domain. So what I've done here in Desmos is graph the red one here is our original function square root of, of 3 minus x and I've restricted the domain using these curly brackets. That's how you restrict domains in Desmos. So x greater than negative 2. Right? That gives us the red graph there. And then in the blue graph, there's our inverse. And I've restricted the domain between 0 and square root of 5. That's what we determined. And I've also graphed, just for reference, this line y equals x. And I made that 
uh, dash line. I do, you can do that by holding down, left clicking and holding down um, in Desmos. You can change that line like so. Um, so what we have here is a function in its inverse and notice this this really nice symmetry right across that diagonal line. Anytime you have a function in its inverse graphed on the same set of axes, you'll have this property, this really nice symmetry across the diagonal line y equals x. This happens with all inverses. It can be logarithmic and exponential. It can be trig functions and inverse trig functions. You'll always have this nice symmetry across that diagonal.